Hey guys, this is Unit 3, Lesson 8 on Sprite Properties. This is Mr. Decker coming to you from the Smart Lab. The computer science standards for this lesson are create clearly named variables that represent different data types and perform operations on their values. Decompose problems and subproblems into parts to facilitate the design, implementation, and review of programs. Systematically test and refine programs using a range of test cases. And finally, documenting programs in order to make them easier to follow, test, and debug. The essential question for this lesson is, how can we use sprites to help us keep track of lots of information in our programs? This entire lesson is on code.org. Make sure you're signed in on code.org with your school Google account. Your grade for this lesson will be based on your programming. Watching the video you're watching right now is mandatory, so make sure you continue to watch this video. The best practice is to watch me do a step in the video, pause the video, and then complete the step on code.org. Repeat until you're finished. All right, so you can click on this handy-dandy link right here. It'll take you over to code.org right here in a new tab. You'll want to find your class. You are in seventh grade. You're looking for unit three, interactive animations and games. You can click right there. It'll take you to this page where you'll see the lessons that you've already completed. And we are doing lesson eight on Sprite properties. So you'll click on bubble one and let's get started. Our question of the day, how can we use Sprite properties to change their appearance on the screen? That's the primary thing we're doing today, learning how to change some of those Sprite properties like their scale, their rotation, and their location. Uh, property is our vocab word for today. It's a label for a characteristic of a Sprite, such as its location and its appearance. The new code we're learning today, sprite.rotation, sprite.scale, sprite.x, and sprite.y. You can probably go ahead and guess what these two accomplish, right? Changes the x position and y position of the sprites. Now the sprite.rotation changes the angle of the sprite. So like 180 degrees, we'll flip it upside down or back and forth, whatever. You'll get it. We'll go over it. You'll understand. The students, the kids will understand. All right. And then sprite.scale, right? Uh, something to scale. So like a matchbox car, right? A matchbox car is like one, I don't know, 140 scale. So it's like, it'd be like, you know, do the math. Um, I need some of you to do math because you're better at math than I am at this point. You're in seventh grade. I haven't done seventh grade math since I was uh, a seventh grader. Haha. <laughs> and that was in 1997. I'm a 90s kid, right? Born in 85. Represent. All right. So, bubble two. Look at the code below and predict where the B sprite will appear. What will the program show? Well, let's see. Let's take a look at the program down here. So variable B gets create sprite 200, 200. So predictably, we could say it's going to show up right here, right? Because the center of the sprite is the X and Y position of the sprite. Uh, it says that B, tying the variables together, the label has to match, right, for the animation to be correct. So B dot set animation is a B. Okay, so it's going to be a B. Buzz, buzz. All right. And then on line three, we have B.X gets 350, B.Y gets 350. So as the computer is reading this, and then down here on line five, we have draw sprites, right? Which is the all important piece of code that has to be there in order for the sprites to show up at all. So on line one, we have the sprite located at 200, 200, and then that changes down here. But the computer reads this so fast, like within milliseconds, right? And it doesn't draw the sprites until line five, so it's not going to draw anything. It's not going to draw it first at 200, 200, because it doesn't draw sprites until it gets to that part of the code. 
So it's only going to draw the sprite down here where it corrects at 350, 350, which is right here. So I'm going to say a, it's going to draw the B sprite and the bottom right corner down here. There's not going to be three B sprites because we're only calling for it once, right? Um, and it won't be two B sprites because we're only calling for it once. And it won't be in the middle of the screen because it corrects itself down here with b.x gets 350 and b.y gets 350. So run it. And Mr. Decker was right the whole time. All right, finish. Continue. Bubble three. Sprite properties. Sprite properties keep track of all the information your program needs to know about a sprite, such as its size and location. You can change the values of these properties just like you do variables and see the results when your sprite is drawn to the screen. Do this. Run the program to see where the sprites appear. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, we've got a little paint palette and a paintbrush. It's kind of a funky looking paintbrush, but you know, to each their own. If that's the kind of paintbrush you prefer, then you know, it's your, it's your ball game, man. Change the X and Y properties of the paintbrush sprite to move it to the palette. All right, so down here, we've got the brush variable setup for create sprite. On line three, on line four, we are setting the animation to paintbrush, right? Which over here, we should be able to see that on the animation tab, paintbrush and paint palette. Makes sense, right? We don't want it to be the paint palette because if I choose the paint palette, it's going to be two paint palettes. You can throw it on the floor, make some paint on the floor, but we need a paintbrush to make the actual art. Sorry, um, Jackson Pollock, with your splatter paint art, climbing ladders and sprinkling paint onto canvases that are sitting on the ground below you, but you know that's not what we're doing here. We're, we're doing programming. All right. Um... Palette is at 100, 300, and it is, it is, it is, you can see it is. And the brush is at 300, 100, and it is, it is, it's right up there, verified. So to get the brush down to the palette, I kind of want to put the center of it up here, 126, 226, let's try that. 126, tab, tab, 226, I think that's what we decided, run it. That looks nice. I like it. So we're dipping the tip of our little brush into the blue to get a little bit of, bit of blue paint. I'm going to paint with the paintbrush and make some pretty art. Very good. Finish. Continue. Bubble four. New properties. Sprites have lots of properties. Indeed, they do. Check out the two new blocks in this activity and try them out for yourself. Notice that different sprites can use the same animation and still look different because of their properties. Do this. Run the program to see how the rotation and scale blocks make the first two notes look different. All right. So this note is a little note. This note's a slightly smaller note, and it looks like it's pointing that way. This note is rotated this way. This note's rotated that way. These notes are just, the same, just big, bulky notes and they're sticking straight up and down, and then we got our cool uh, five-piece drum set down here. One, two, three, four, five. That's the chair. One, two, three, four, five. That's a chair. All right. Um, let's see. We ran the program. Use the rotation and scale blocks on the last two nodes to make them look different, too. Okay. So we've got note one at 50-50, that's this guy. And his scale was set to 0 0.3, and his rotation was set to 20 degrees. Um, note two, this guy, is at 150-50. Yeah, cool. And that scale is 0 0.7. So yeah, I was right, it is slightly smaller. And its rotation is negative 30 degrees, which is what sets it this way. So 20 degrees, we're rotating clockwise to the right. 
and negative degrees were rotating counterclockwise to the left. All right, so let's mess around with notes three and four down here from line 12 to line 15. So we need to go to our sprites drawer in the toolbox. We need to grab scale and rotation. And we're going to do that twice to set both of these up. We're going to reset this so we can see it all. Uh, grab scale. And we need to match the labels now. So we can't just leave it as sprite.scale, sprite.rotation, because it's not tying it to any label for any variable. It has to be note 3 and note 4 down here. So let's control C, make it easier on ourselves. One of the great things about computer science is that lazy people tend to be the innovators in computer science because lazy people are always looking for the easy way out, right? Lazy people are always trying to find the easy way to do a difficult thing. And, um, you know, lazy people are sometimes creative, and those creative lazy people tend to uh, find interesting ways to do stuff. So copy-paste is one of those interesting ways to get things done quickly without having to type everything out over and over and over again. All right, so Control-C, Control-V, you got it. You've seen me do it a few times. You know what you're doing. You're a smart kid. All right. Let's see. Um, scale, let's run it. Nothing shows up because we have errors here because we haven't given these properties yet. So let's give them properties. So scale, let's set it to like 1.5. Whoop, let's type 1.5. Uh, rotation, let's do like 90. So it's kind of laying down on its side. Um, and then for this one, let's try for scale, let's do 0 0.5. So it's half as big. And then it's rotation. Let's try like negative 60 degrees. Reset, run. Cool. Yeah, and just play around with it, right? Have fun. Put your notes in weird places. I don't care. Do what you want. It's your ball game. All right, bubble five. We've got some uh, challenges to do. And some of you guys haven't been doing the challenges. What are you doing with your lives? Come on, man. When you see a challenge and you see me do it, you do it, man. Come on, man. All right. Scale property. The scale property changes the size of the sprite. Scale of one. And if you're like, I wasn't paying attention for that half a second, Mr. Decker. All right. I went to scale property, which is the A activity here. Now you're in the right place. Now you know what you're doing. All right, scale property. The scale property changes the size of the sprite. Scale of 1 is the normal size. Scale of 2 is twice as big. And a scale of 0 0.5 is half as big. So that's something to keep in mind, right? That's really important. If you're changing the scale of something, 1, a scale of 1, 1 to 1 ratio is the normal size. Anything bigger than 1 is going to make it bigger. Anything smaller than one is going to make it smaller. And it's important to put that zero in front of the, the point, the decimal point, because if you don't, you're going to get a little error. And it'll, the program will work, but you know, I don't want, and I'm, I'm not entirely offended with laziness, like I was saying earlier, but that's just a level of lazy that is unacceptable. Put your zero in there. Come on. Low effort. Do this. Use the scale property. I'm going to do that. Use the scale property to make it look like the picture. Here's the pretty picture. We've got a little fly. We've got a little fish in a bowl or a pond or whatever that's supposed to be. Cow and an elephant. And everything's kind of to scale. That's a big old fly, though. Um... All right, so we'll use the scale property to make it look like the picture. Make sure that each animal is as big as it should be. Make sure the fish fits in the pond. We can do that. All right, run. Okay, right now it's kind of wonky. The 
cow is just as big as the elephant, which is not real life. That's not anybody's reality. All right, so cow scale, we'll bring him down to reality. Let's try 0 0.5. Okay, and then the fly we need to make smaller. Let's make him like 0 0.2. that's like a fly to scale i'm gonna leave it at that if you can see that you've got really good eyes so good job um fish scale he needs to fit in the pond so let's try 0 0.3 set run yeah a little fishy in the little pond all right and then the elephant is actually kind of already to scale but we're trying to match the picture Match the picture, Mr. Decker. It's what the directions say to you. Um, so let's get him down to like 0 0.8. That's, I think that's exactly the same scale that they used. I think the cow is the exact same scale that they used. My fish is a little smaller, but, you know, for the fish to be able to survive in the pond, we need it to be a little smaller. Their fish isn't going to live. Sad story, the fish that wouldn't live in the little pond, uh, somebody write a children's book, it'll be depressing, and it'll make the lives of those three-year-olds really sad, but it's the truth, it's the truth that they set up right here. All right, and then the fly is smaller than their fly, but my fly is a reality fly. Their fly is like, the fly uh, is thinking that he's the juggernaut or something. All right, finish. Continue. And we're on to the next one. Rotation property, the B one. All right, rotation. The dot rotation sprite property rotates an image by between 0 and 360 degrees, right? A full circle, 360 degrees. So if you're standing in a spot and you jump up in the air and you spin and you land facing the same direction that you started in, you did a 360, right? We do that in skateboarding all the time. Um, one of the tricks that I never was able to do, a 360 flip. It's very difficult. Um, I hurt myself many times trying to do it. The image is rotated clockwise. For example, my sprite dot rotation equals 90. We'll turn it one quarter rotation to its right. Do this. Add, so like 90 degrees, right? So 90 degrees. Like making a square. Every angle of a square is 90 degrees. If you think it isn't, you are wrong. Um, do this. Add dot rotation blocks to the code to make all of the cars look like they're traveling correctly down the roads. Down the roads. Okay, run. Yeah, um, while this might look like parent pickup or parent drop off in the morning, we need to fix this. We can't, we can't have parent pickup and parent drop off looking like this. This guy's going down the wrong side of the road. This car like is in the process of spinning out, trying to drift around this corner and go up that way. Um, I think the green car is correct, isn't it? Here's his headlights going up that way. I don't think we need to fix the green car. Uh, the yellow car, they like, you know, they're, they're being dangerous, so we need to fix that. This guy's driving down the wrong side. We need to get them facing that way, probably. Driving away from the intersection. Where are the stop signs or red lights? Ah, okay, um, background, uh, dark sea green. Yeah, that's good. The shape, I'm assuming this complicated jumble of numbers here is making this roadway. And then these lines are the uh, medians there. All right, so let's get everything going in the correct direction. Car top dot scale. Okay, I see car top, car left, car bottom car right and then we've got the different cars should have over here oh there's a black car where'd the black car come from there's no black car in here mystery car all right 
And everything set to 0 0.6 scale. Um, all right, so we need to grab rotation blocks. Sprite drawer, sprite.rotation. Uh, the top one is correct, so we'll leave it alone. Car left. Using camel case. Car left's rotation needs to be, we'll rotate it 90 degrees so it's facing facing the intersection. Reset run. Good. And then car bottom down here, we're going to turn it 180 degrees so it's facing down away from the intersection and driving then the correct direction on the correct side of the road. So car bottom, using camel case, because if you don't use the capital B, it's not going to work. It's going to give you an error. And we're going to do that 180. That is a skateboarding trick that I can do. Um, all right. And then car right. Grab another rotation block. And using camel case. Make sure you've got two R's in there. One little R, one big R. And this one, that looks like 45 degrees, I'm guessing, but sometimes my guesses are correct then, <laughs> just like right now. Okay, cool. So now the rotations are correct. So if you are drawing something in game lab background, if you're throwing some sprites in here and you need them to be rotated a certain way, this is how you do it. Beautiful. Finish. Continue. On to the next one. We're finished. So green and green, we did it. Make it fit. The food is way too big to fit on the plate. Use your knowledge of sprite properties to make it fit. Do this. Run the program to see how big the food is. Okay. Um, you know, I kind of, in a way, don't want to fix it because... Uh, it's a big burger, and I like big burgers. And it's a lot of fries, and I like a lot of fries. But uh, we're going to do healthy portions. Jeez. Okay, healthy portions. We'll do it. Use Sprite properties to scale all the food sprites down so they fit on the plate. All right, so Sprite's drawer, Sprite.scale for the fries, Sprite.scale for the burger, Sprite.scale for the dessert. Watermelon's a dessert? All right. Well, okay. We'll take it. Fries. Got to match all the labels. Burger. Hamburger. All right. And Sprite. Actually, that's a cheeseburger. It's got some cheese on it. See the cheese? Here's cheese. Um, and then dessert. Not a desert with one S. It's a dessert with two S's. And then we're scaling these down. So we sadly need to make our pile of fries smaller. So 0 0.4, let's say, reset run. Oh, right. I got to give everything else scale. Uh, burger, 0 0.6. And dessert, 0 0.5, let's say. Reset run. Oh, no. I made everything way too little. This is like a Happy Meal size. All right. Fries dot scale. Let's go way bigger than that. 0 0.7. Burger. Let's go with like 0 0.8. And then dessert. Let's try 0 0.7 as well. Reset run. Dang it. All right. Burger has to be smaller than that. I want it to be smaller than that, but it has to be smaller than that. Ah, 0 0.6 on the burger, but that's... no. Nope, I'm happy with it. I'm not making my burger any smaller than that. I say it fits on the plate. <laughs> All right. Um, let's finish. So now you understand how a scale works. And I hope you're paying attention to these lines over here where I'm placing things. That's important, too. I haven't been mentioning that as much as I used to, but I feel like... By lesson eight, you should be picking up what I'm dropping. 
All right, bubble seven, we've got a couple of challenges. Let's learn how to use the tent block. So let's go to challenge A. And the tent block, what it does, it's kind of neat. Um, you can do a couple different things with it. I think what they want you to learn here is um, how to change colors of a basic sprite. So you're not necessarily stuck with the color of the sprite that it gives you, um, like going into animation, adding a new animation, and then finding something that you want to do. Hey, I like this is actually really cute. Bear with fish. Let's do that one. Um, it looks kind of bajiggity in there, but you know, scaling it down, it'll look right because the the, the pixel density is really big on the screen there. I love that. I actually really love that. Okay. So the creature, um, we got to match the label. So control C, control V, and then its scale is 0 0.3. So it's going to draw it on the screen a lot smaller than its normal size. Um, and then the tent, we need to make quotation marks. So sh hold down your shift key. Make a quotation mark, and then let's make the creature green. Done it. Now he's green. Now if I throw this away and run it, you'll see what it normally looks like. Now let's grab sprite.tent, put it back. Oops. Control V. Control V, I'm telling you. Oh, shoot, shoot. Wrong button. Control Z. Control Z. Ah! Ah! Okay. Ah! Ah! Uh, we made it out of the scary house. Okay, creature. A tent equals. And then again, right, quotation marks. Because if you don't do a quotation mark and I just say green, reset run, nothing happens. Right? And it tells you there's an error. Green hasn't been declared yet. It thinks that we're trying to establish some kind of variable. But we're not. We're just trying to change a sprite property. Oh, no. I am messing up all over the place. Okay. Control Z is my friend. It's my undo button. Okay. Quotations. Let's make them purple. It's purple. Um, you're getting the idea. Now we can put like uh, red, green, blue values in here, RGB, but it's only going to do it on a black and white scale. So if I put a two here, it's going to turn this black. Right? Now we just have like a scary looking shadow creature um spooky spooky skeletons all right and then if we give this like 255 it does nothing and that's the top of the scale it's not going to give it any gray skeleton if i did like uh 150 it'll make should make it kind of grayish yeah um yeah, you're getting it. So you've got your RGB values from 1 to 255. You've got your uh, values there. Now let's change this to the bear. So I can change the label. Bear. 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 And then make him the bear with the fishy. Reset run. Uh, let's make him a lot bigger. Let's change the scale to one. This is normal size. Now we've got a big blue bear. Um, what color do we want the bear to be? C green. Or we could try using our imaginations. Um, what color bear do I want to see with a fish? He's got his fish. He's ready to eat. Mm, let's go with, I mean, brown bears, right? He's already brown. What does brown do on a brown bear? Makes everything brown. And if I throw this away, he's back to normal. See? Finish. Now you understand the tent block. It's kind of fun. Height and width of our sprites we can mess around with. Right now we've got... Tall giraffe. Let's 
Put them in the stretcher. All right, height and width. You learned about the scale of property which grows or shrinks a sprite while keeping their height to width ratio the same, but it is possible to only change the height or width of a sprite with other properties. Do this. Using either the sprite already created for you or with any other sprites of your choosing, play around with the height and width properties and think about when you would want to use these properties versus using the scale property. It wants us to do some thinky thoughts. All right. So we've only got three lines of code here to draw the giraffe, and he's probably hiding out over here on the animation tab, and he is. Um, so let's go to the sprites drawer. I want to mess with his height. Um, and the people that made this level were boring and just called it a sprite. All right, so height. Remember, it, it's doing this by pixel height. Let's try 400. So that stretches him from the very bottom to the very top. Now, if I change his height, let's say, to like 100, it'll make him a very squat giraffe. See? See what I'm saying? Um, let's see. And I can change his width, make him skinnier. Um, what is his width set to? His width isn't set to anything. It's just standard. So let's try a width of 100. So that makes him kind of normal looking. Um, let's try a width of 300. All right. See, so you can kind of play around with that, mess around with it, get the image into the, or the, not the image, the sprite or animation into the height, width, and scale that you want and the rotation that you want. So I can go in here and change the way he's rotated, right? Um, make him kind of catty cornered, 45 degrees. So make him stand on his head, right? 180. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with this. Um, I think it's kind of fun, but that's it. That's all we got. That's the end of the show. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Let's finish. And it will send you over to Lesson 9, but you can't go to Lesson 9 yet because I haven't opened it up yet. But anyway, that's the end of it. The next thing we're going to learn about is putting text on the screen, which is very important for video games that you'll be making and scenes that you'll be making as well, like making your characters have dialogue or having your... Uh, directions on the screen, putting a score on the screen, all kinds of good stuff.